Hello, my, my name is Andrew Ray, and this is Sola El Hueli, and she's here today to show me how to temper chocolate. Now, I'm terrified of tempering chocolate, I think most people are, but you are very, very good at it. Nothing to be scared of, totally easy. All right. We're gonna crush it. Well, not only am I gonna have a hard time trying it with a face mask on, but my glasses are fogging up, so, you and I both have the antibodies. New York is in phase three of reopening right now. How do we feel about going maskless? Let's do it. Let's go for it. Naked faces for the world. This is weird. Basics with Babish and my website, basicswithbabish.com, are brought to you by Squarespace. Head there now to check out all of the recipes from the show, kitchen equipment lists, and more. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order by visiting squarespace.com babish. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. So, so long. What is tempering chocolate? Why temper chocolate? When you melt chocolate, it, it actually can reset in a lot of different ways. There's a, one particular temp where you get the perfect crystal structures. Crystal formation actually takes quite a bit of time if you just melt and cool. So instead what we do is you drop it down below your target temperature. And there, at that lower temperature, crystal formation is really active. Basically, you're gonna melt it and then you're gonna reduce the temperature and then you're gonna bring it back up. And there's reasons for that but you don't need to know them if you don't want to. That makes much more sense to me. So the idea of tempering chocolate is that we want to make chocolate that is going to set at room temperature. Yeah. For those of us who are newcomers to chocolate tempering or who have tried many times and failed, any advice that you could throw out there before we get into the kitchen? The number one thing with chocolate is patience. I think that that's where people fail because you're like, oh, it's just one degree off, it'll be fine. It won't be fine. You gotta take it to the tenth that I'm telling you to take it or it won't be fine. Okay. Just wait, it might be five minutes, it might be 30 minutes, but if you wait, you'll be rewarded with shiny, snappy, glossy chocolate. Shiny, snappy, glossy, that, that's what they called me in high school. Um, let's temper some chocolate, <laughs> all right. Oh. Just for reference, we have Valrona 64% chocolate here, the best. My so favorite, yeah. This is your favorite, but generally chocolate between 60 and 70% is where we wanna be. I mean, you can temper any kind of chocolate, but I like this because it's, it's great for just the coating as well as ganache. You can just invest in one chocolate and get a lot out of it. And with this versatile chocolate, our tempered journey begins. First, dumping an inordinate amount of chocolate out onto our work surface. Beyond shock and awe, using a large quantity of chocolate makes it easier to measure and control the temperature in your melting bowl, which we're gonna fill to the brim with our chocolate fivas. Maybe I asked you to get too much chocolate. That's not true. So to <laughs> temper the chocolate, what do we gotta do? So we're gonna just start by melting it. Melt it all. To melt, we are placing our chocolate-filled bowl, ow, atop a large pot of just barely simmering water being held over low flame, stirring constantly with our oven mitts equipped to eventually achieve our chocolate's recommended temperature of 131 to 136 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is gonna take a little while, so uh, we'll see you guys in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All jokes aside, Solo is right. Patience is a virtue most divine in chocolate tempering. As we stir and slowly bring up the heat, checking it periodically to taste thermometer drippings. 132, 133, 134. I think we're good. Off the heat, and then now we're adding the seed chocolate. Yes. Both to cool off the chocolate and to help develop a crystalline cellular structure, we're gonna add something called seed chocolate, which is just a couple ounces of finely chopped chocolate. This and a target temperature of 83 degrees Fahrenheit are gonna come together to give our chocolate the three S's of quality temperament, shine, snap, and uh, sexiness. Make sure you're going in under, get all the sides, you know? Okay. Stirring and scraping. See, you can see these little swirlies. Like, if oh, yeah. this set right now, it would maintain those old swirls. And I always get the damn swirlies, so. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. What do we say to the god of swirlies? Not today. You know we're getting close, because you can just like feel it as you're, as you're stirring. It's like sticking yeah, to the Yeah, there's like bowl. suction at the bottom, almost. Now when we're getting closer, you want to make sure you're constantly scraping down the sides oh, okay. of the bowl. So you don't want it to like set to the sides of the bowl and then fall back into the chocolate. Got and then it. you have little crumbles of chocolate and that's gross. On the horizon of our goal, the cool down's final three degrees test the metal of any challenger of chocolate. I'd be remiss not to share with you the strange places this dark chocolate took us. 
You've been doing this so much longer than I have. I don't know how you do it. it everything gets boring and easy after a while. <laughs> it's like, who's going to win here? You or the chocolate? Not the chocolate. <laughs> Not the chocolate. Not in my house. It's just like, you know, when you're a kid on a road trip. Are we there yet? That's it. That's... I guess I'm the kid in this situation. <laughs> no, we Is it all done are. Yet? You just gotta maintain the same chill you had when you got in here, you maintain know? Maintain chill. The more you're stirring, the angrier you seem to be getting. You do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not anger, it's sadness. 83. Three. Don't go to 84, don't do it. I think we got it. With our chocolate finally reaching the crystal continuum, it's time to place it back on the double boiler to reach its working temperature of 88 degrees Fahrenheit and finally test it on the medium of your choosing. We chose strawberries. That is looking like a strawberry with chocolate on it. Now we're gonna start making candy. We're gonna start making candy. Let's make candy, all right. All right, have you made honeycomb before? I've never made honeycomb before either. It's the best candy to make if you have never made candy before and if you don't have a thermometer because you don't need one. We started our easy candy that I thought I couldn't possibly screw up by combining 300 grams of sugar, 40 grams of corn syrup, and a third of a cup of water in a medium saucepan. Set it over medium heat and begin a process that I'll let Sola explain. Okay, so when you cook sugar, it actually gets a little acidic. Because it gets a little acidic, we're gonna add some baking soda to it. And just like when you do vinegar baking soda, it's gonna bubble up, get a lot of air in it, and then you get this nice, light, crispy candy instead of it just being like hard. I've never tried this candy before. And this You've never tried it? What, I don't understand. Nope. That's like me not watching Lord of the Rings. All right, so we both have flaws. With the mixture warmed, I'm stirring with a fork, or a uh, Sola is, to gently break up any large lumps of sugar to aid in its melting before covering for a few minutes to steam down any crystals of sugar that may have splashed onto the pot's sides. Then let Sola amp you up for what you're about to do. It's gonna get amber. Okay. You dump in the baking soda all at once, whisk for no more than 30 seconds, but be thorough. It's gonna bubble up and then just in one clean, smooth motion, you're gonna pour it out. If there's too much agitation, you'll lose the bubbles and it's just gonna... God, I'm scared. Be super careful, because this will burn a hole right through your hand. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it done. Okay. Uh, let's see if the sugar's dissolved. We just need to simmer it closed while, until the sugar syrup dissolves. You wanna look? Did we get it? Yes. Now we're in pursuit of a... Amber. Amber. In the pursuit of amber, you may find that your sugar is coloring unevenly. If so, you want to gently, delicately stir with a tiny whisk to spread out areas of the mixture that are darkening faster than others. This is pretty amber. Is this yeah, not... I think you're there. Go, okay, okay. okay. So, All right. He stays on? No, let's turn it off. Do it. Okay, Go. Dump. Dump. Whisk. Oh, I need oh God, gloves. you need it. Oh, God. Come on. Oh, God. Come on. Oh, God. Come on. Here we go. Thorough, but Ooh. fast. Look at that poof. Look Ooh. at that. Look at the poof. Look at Look that. At the poof. All right, ah. pour, pour, pour. Oh, okay, oh, okay. All right, here we go. One clean movement. One clean movement. You did it. I tried oh. so hard and have failed. I think that so that's hilariously. gold medal. That's gold Are you medal, honey. This looks like a mess. Now put the whisk back here. Don't shake it off into there. Ow. And just walk away. Okay, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think it might have overcooked. Yeah, it looks like it. We might have to do it again. Yeah. But that was a fantastic first round. The repeated steps of the process mock me. Each one a reminder of my defeat. I must rise from the burnt ash of honeycomb. I'll not be made a mockery of in my own kitchen. No, not in the past, not in the future, and certainly not now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do it, do it, do it, do okay, it, do I'm it. Do it. No, no. Drop it in the Tell me when to go. I think you're good. Good? Yeah. Here we go. Oh, look at how pretty. It's like beautiful honey color. That's really good. I think that's why this is it. I and think you nailed it. it. Yeah. We gotta let this cool completely. And then we're gonna cut it up, break it up and dip it in chocolate? Yep, totally. Once the honeycomb is completely cooled, use a serrated knife to cut it into candy-sized pieces, which we're then gonna dip in our tempered chocolate and place on a parchment-lined baking sheet before sprinkling with flaky salt. So we still have a lot of leftover chocolate here. What do you propose that we do with it? I want to try and make like a pinata. A hollow, a hollow thing of your head that we can fill with chocolate and smash. You want to make a pinata of my head and smash it? Yeah, I've not done this before. I have made a pinata, but not one out of chocolate. Well, uh, I'm not going to think too hard about the uh, psychological underpinnings of what you want to do. <laughs> Good luck. You guys have fun, don't you? 
Is this gonna be my beard? I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, just break it up. Little strands. This is such an honor <laughs> to have a, a, a bust made of my head out of chocolate. That's about the size of my head, right? It's a little big. I have a big head. Maybe a little, a little. Let's grab my hat, see if it fits. You're right, that is a little big. It's not quite accepting my hat. Your head's not as big as you think. Mm. Hush, little balloon, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a hat. That seems good. Yeah, okay, that fits. Let's try to learn how to tie off a balloon. First time. I am oddly lacking in life experience. Right First time for today. everything, you know? This isn't even the hardest part of this. <laughs> hardest part of my day. I can do this. I can do this. Okay, I did it, I tied the balloon. You know what I've learned today? What? You're persistent. And in that spirit, we persisted in making a chocolate me. Covering a balloon in two layers of chocolate, popping and removing it, piping my prominent features, affixing them to our sphere, using chocolate as glue and cooling it quickly by spraying it with canned air held upside down, then filling my dome with our homemade candy. It was a lot of work to get here, but I think the results speak for themselves. All right, are you ready to meet the chocolate babish head? Model, pinata, candy boy. Zola, so, uh, you've done amazing work here. Shall we, we show the world? I, I think we, Let's yeah. Let's do it together. It's time, Ready? all right. Here we all go. Right. Three, spin. two, one. Dun, dun, dun. Wow, wow. I think. I mean, the resemblance is striking. Uncanny, uncanny. Let's beat the shit out of it. Yeah. One, two, three. Oh! Oh, oh my brains! <laughs> my brains! So much stronger than I imagined. <laughs> wow! Look at Dude, wow. oh look how perfect. It's so, it's so shiny, shiny on the inside. inside. <laughs> Just like my real skull. Chris? Well, my head is delicious. Mm -hmm. Let's try my brains. I've been dying to try one of these. Mm. This is so good. It's honeycomb with a little bit of salt. Success. This is quite a success. Thank you so much for coming by and teaching me how to do this. Next up, Reptar bars, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The possibilities are limitless now that we know how to temper chocolate. Make a head pinata of your own. For everybody who makes a tempered chocolate head pinata thing, the way that we just did, I will personally donate $50 to Feed America. How's that sound? Wow. Awesome. Tag us. To, well, we'll put it on the screen. Right here. Brad, make it go up on the screen when I do that. <laughs> right here. No, no, bring it back. There. Okay, you got it. Tag us in the chocolate pinata head challenge. Do it! Oh! We'll see you next time. Thank you so much for coming through. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was Thank super you for fun. solving the, the chocolate tempering problem for me and for so many others. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. We'll see you next time on Tempering with. This episode and many others have been sponsored by Squarespace because they've been an amazing partner in both bringing this show and my websites to life. They've got a really intuitive, easy to use platform that made it super easy for someone like me who's never done web design, ever. They have templates, they do domains, they have really good customer service. It's basically a one-stop shop for building a really slick website. If you want to try it for yourself, you can start your free trial today by visiting squarespace.com babish to get 10% off your first purchase. 